You know, we read and hear about getting in the word, referring to reading our Bible and taking in the very breath of God through scripture. And the importance of doing that is that it helps us to stay fed and nourished spiritually. So I was reading this passage about the Samaritan woman at the well that met Jesus. And we're just reading it over and over again, letting those words sink in and how he said, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. Whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And just thinking how so many times our soul is dried out, it's in need of a drink. But instead of taking the time to sit and remain in God's word to quench our thirsty soul, we respond first to something else. We get busy, we get exhausted, we're lazy, we have family demands. I get it. But pretty soon we're pushing our spiritual thirst aside and thinking, I'll just quench it later or some other way, through ministry, or through quick prayers, or a serving of yesterday's manna, which is just dry leftovers. And after a while, we start to grow accustomed to having a dry mouth. And the show must go on, right? Life's not going to stop. Things keep happening. Circumstances weigh heavier. Mountains rise higher. Irritations morph into serious offenses. Setbacks are equivalent to failures. Discouragement turns into despair. And before long, our joy and our hope are missing entirely. And those are signs, signs that our souls thirst, that they have gone too long without the living water. The word that once saturated us has evaporated. You know, we have to drink daily. The biggest indicator of it all is that pervasive thought that if we could just change our circumstances, we could finally be happy. Why do we do that? Why do we believe that? We should just send ourselves an email or write a note on the bathroom mirror that says, note to self, you don't need to change your circumstances to find joy. You need Jesus. You need to drink deeply from his word today, tomorrow, and the day after that. Let it wash you. Let it refresh you and revive what is so dead inside. It will literally change your perspective on everything. You might think, well, it's, it's my kids. You know, it's where I live. It's my financial struggles. It's problems with my family. But the parched soul can only find refreshment in one source. Maybe it's in the dark of quiet in the early mornings that you can get in God's word. Maybe it's in the heavy heat of the day that you can find some shade and read in God's word. The key is to recognize your need, to correctly decipher your feelings. Do you feel discontent? You need the promises of Jesus. Are you afraid? You need the passage of courage. Are you feeling frazzled? You need that reminder to be still and know he is God. Are you bitter? You need to be reminded of his humility and sacrifice for you. Are you sad? You need compassion from the comforter himself. My soul, your soul, expresses thirst in many ways, but they are only quenched through one. We have been led to the living water. The question is, will we drink?